Hey Cam here at the Family Music Store. I'm here with Jack, the Lumberjack. <laughs> Lumberjack, Jack. Lumberjack, Jack and the Plaid today. Today Jack has come as. Jack works with us on Saturdays and uh, we're going to be having a look at Jack's lovely... What is it Jack? This is a Gibson Les Paul from the custom shop in 2011. Um, I've had this for what, seven years now. And it's worth and about five billion dollars. It's worth a lot of money. This is a very high end sort of Les Paul, so this is one of the, not the most expensive one you can get. It will have all sorts of runoffs and stuff, but in terms of straight up production models, this would be one of the, one of the top one of the most high end Gibson Les Pauls. And we're going to compare it today to this, which is a Court CR, stands for Classic Rock 250, which is obviously a Les Paul style guitar. Um, this is mahogany body, same as this, maple cap, same as that. Um, what else? Rosewood neck, nice pickups, whatever. This is about, well, in New Zealand, where we are, this is about $7.99, which I don't know how much they are in America, but this would be considered extremely good value and, and a really inexpensive way to get a mahogany maple cap Les Paul. So we wanted to, we were just sort of curious about how they sound compared to each other. So Jack's going to play for us. We're plugged into a Vox AC10. Um, we're just using the camera mic. We're pretty low tech here, so hopefully it sounds okay and you can hear the difference or similarities between the two guitars. And um, and we're just going to um, see what you think. So here's the neck pickup. Here's the bridge pickup. We might as well have a listen to the middle position, but yeah. Jack, you've got something different going on with your middle position. This is a, so if you're a fan of Peter Green or BB King, old blues guys, they have what's called an out of phase pickup. So instead of the pickups working together, they work opposite to each other and they sound a bit more hollow, kind of airy like this. So obviously this guitar doesn't have that mod, so these um, are going to sound quite a lot different in the middle position. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll maybe try and ignore that a little bit. Um, this guitar didn't come like that. Jack modded it, right? Yes. When you were about, um, four, <laughs> about four years old, yeah, I think? Yeah, four and a half. With a soldering iron? Yeah, these are Seymour Duncan antiquity pickups. Yeah. So let me just get this straight. You bought a seven billion dollar guitar yes. and you didn't like the pickups. Yeah, um, it's just, you know, you, you got to tinker. Do you want to try with a little bit more gain or? Yeah, um, or should we play the let's chord do, Let's do the swap and, and then, then we'll, we'll do gain. That's a good idea, yep. Jack. That's why you right. get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Mega bucks. Right, we'll do the same riff before. So the pickups are working together. Nice. So that's that middle position that's obviously different from this. It's the stock standard wiring rather than the reverse phase wiring that Peter Green made famous 
Peter Green was the original guitarist for Fleetwood Mac, bass back in the days when they were a London based blues band before they became a 1970s pop sensation. Cool. I hope we get some gain on them then. Yeah, let's get yep. some gain. I'd just like to add that this is not supposed to be a demo on the ACT, but that's a killer sounding amp. Alright, so uh, I'll play the same riff as before. Songs that riff from? That is from a song called Still Walking by Pale Lady. Alright, Nick, pick up. So what are your thoughts? So, oh, so what, what can I hear? I can hear that this has definitely got uh, a bit more grunt coming out of the pickup. It's, it's a bit louder, especially on the bridge pickup. I've sort of been gearing that guitar towards that blues, sort of almost tally-ish kind of Les Paul time. Um, and it definitely has that sort of slightly more rounded kind of Tone a little bit more, a little bit warmer. I don't know if you can hear that on the video, but it's just a little fraction more kind of rounded and warm. But it's not night and day. It's not night and day. And like this guitar has just, it's a bit more piercing. You can sort of cut through a bit yeah, more. Yeah, so like so. live, um, or an even recording. There's quite a lot behind those notes to really push it through. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the feel wise they're a little bit different this one the first thing i noticed is this one's quite a lot heavier so this is this is mahogany body maple cap so it's traditional les paul construction i don't think it's weight relieved so it's still pretty heavy it might be weight relieved it's hard i don't know no it sounds pretty solid it's you can usually hear solid. a little bit of a yeah the, so yeah. um so it's still a heavy guitar these pools are always going to be heavy well they should be that's if, the, if it's not heavy, it's not really a proper Les Paul, is it? Mm. This one has a little bit more of this kind of feeling like it's going to fall this way because it's so... It's a big slab. It's a big yep. slab of wood. Um, and the neck's a little chunkier on this one. Yeah. That's got that real 50s kind of chunky... Is this a, supposed to be a 50 something it's reissue? It's a 58 reissue. 58 reissue. So it has that chunky 50s neck, um, which... You know, I quite like nowadays. I didn't used to. <laughs> kind of like a thicker neck nowadays. It's such a personal thing. That's still a reasonably chunky neck, though. It's definitely it's a, not a shreddy neck. It's definitely no Ibanez yeah. sort of like shred stick kind of thing. Um, I consider this like a sort of yeah. 60s slim taper or similar to that. Um, so I think that the, in conclusion, the difference between a you know, in New Zealand, this is what an eight hundred dollar guitar, and this is an eight thousand dollar guitar, or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> um, you know, you don't get ten times the guitar for ten times the price. It's not as straightforward as that. You might, you're definitely getting. You know, I'm sure Jack or I w would both say that we would definitely prefer this, and not just because of the prestige. It's a nice, it's a nicer sound, and it's nice. You know, there's little subtle things we like better about it, but it's more like, you know, it's more like we're being wine snobs. You know, we're like, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's hints of oak tannins or whatever, yeah. and there's a, a sort of hint of blueberry in there. As a, you know, it's not, it's not. Um, yeah, it's basically the same thing. Law of diminishing returns, really. Yeah. Yeah. 
dif the difference between I mean, I'm talking New Zealand prices, so this is, you, if you're watching from another country, you have to half everything I'm saying. But the difference between a um, $800 guitar and a $200 guitar is way more significant than the difference between an $8,000 guitar and an $800 guitar. So if you get a $200 guitar, it's probably going to have a lot of bad bits and a lot of you know things that are just not perfect about it and it might not sound as good or it might just not play as nice once you get into that sort of eight hundred dollar ish especially with a brand like court that's such good value for money you get actually something that you could totally gig with and record with and be perfectly happy with um, but then going up mm. to here now that's where all the fancy kind of <laughs> you've got to have the money to you know jack's lucky that he comes from you know uh, the very rich family <laughs> Rock royalty. Do we pay with my dad? Oh. So just a little interesting comparison there, and we thought you might like to hear the difference if you're sort of considering getting like one of these guitars. It's not. It's a, a perfectly nice guitar and great, amazing value for money, and um, not. I mean, obviously, it's not an eight thousand dollar custom shop Les Paul, but still gonna. It's still gonna give you that Let's Les Paul kind of sound and sound pretty awesome. Thanks, Jack. Also, make sure you subscribe to our videos. Um, we'll do more music tips, um, how to play tips, uh, gear tips, um, various kind of things like that. And um, you know, subscribe, follow, and we'll try and do as many as we can. And if you've got any um, questions, things that you'd like to know about guitars or basses or ukuleles or harmonicas or glockenspiels or <laughs> auto harps. Auto harps I don't know anything about, but I do know something about harmonicas and very little about glockenspiels. Uh, anyway, hit the subscribe thingy and all that. I know there's a lot out there, but give us a go. You won't be sorry.